No, no buzz. I just bees book club. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, The Furrows by Namali Serpel. This is an advanced reader copy. Um, it is uncorrected. Uh, you know, all of all the caveats. It's coming out, I believe, in September. Yeah, publication month tentative, September 2022. Uh, it is obviously May. Um, it is the follow-up to Namali Serpel. It's not not a not sequel follow-up, but a, you know, book follow-up to Serpel's 2019 novel, The Old Drift, which um, I think I read just before I started doing this um, this YouTube thing, and um, I really love I really love that book. Um, I found it actually because um, I got a a comp copy of her um book of essays stranger faces uh it was part of the transit books uh, undelivered lecture series which i did a video on um another book in that series so i've talked about a bit about stranger faces there and maybe even the old drift i don't remember um the old drift i think is a is a is a masterpiece in many ways um it's not sort of my general genre it is the the it's a sort of a um, historical fiction, or it starts as a historical fiction, works its way all the way up through magical realism and social realism into a science fiction piece. Um, it just, like, just absolutely, you know, um, knocked my socks off, as it were. Um, so I had very high expectations coming into The Furrows, and I, I, I did a little research, and as far as I can tell, I'm the second person on the internet to talk about this, aside from a Goodreads review. So uh, there's that. Um, don't get mad at me, I guess. Um, a sort of high level here, um, even just reading straight up, uh, Cassandra Williams is 12, her little brother Wayne is 7. One day when they're alone together, they're an, there is an accident and Wayne is lost forever. His body is never recovered. The missing boy cleaves the family with doubt. Their father leaves, starts another family elsewhere, but their mother can't give up hope and launches an organization dedicated to missing children. Um, yeah. This is sort of a book uh, cleft in two, um, and I'm going to have to give some sort of broad formal spoilers to talk about how re how really, really good it is. But also, that's just the sort of what will eventually be the back of the back of the jacket copy. Um, I would also like to read the first sentence because it's a fucking killer. Um, I don't want to tell you what happened. I want to tell you how it felt. Actually, I'm going to read the whole first paragraph because it's, all, it's just incredible. Um, I don't want to tell you what happened. I want to tell you how it felt. When I was 12, my little brother drowned. He was seven. I was with him. I swam him to shore. His arms were wrapped around my neck from behind, his chest on my back, his knees pummeling my thighs. At first, his small, heavy head was on my shoulder, and he breathed in my ear, the occasional snort when water came in. His head bounced. My shoulder ached. His hands were knotted at my collarbone, and I held them there with my hand, both so that he wouldn't let go and so that he wouldn't choke me. With my other hand, I pushed the water away. Um, God, this book, it's, um, sentence to sentence level, this book is just, like, out of this world. Um, Sir Pell is, just, is a really, really, really strong, literary, has a really strong literary voice. Um, her writing could drag me through anything i think um luckily it hasn't had to so far because both stranger faces faces and old drift well old drift not super my thing necessarily but like the history of zambia told through multiple genres is like is cool even if it's not like the style of novel i tend to read all the time stranger faces the collection of essays about faces and and strangers um and what we sort of interpolate into our understanding of how how faces should look um it's you know it talks about the elephant man and emojis and and you know it's one of those books it's, it's good it's i really enjoyed it um um this one this no slouch on the sentence to sense i mean i don't want to tell you what happened i want to tell you how it felt is like mm, it's an ace ace fucking opening sentence um the first like three or four paragraphs uh, which i won't read the entirety of are like not just um, really well constructed in a literary sense um, and like compelling to read and if you want to understand what is going to happen next, they're also just um, really important um, ticks of language that that get sort of uh, unspooled throughout the rest of the novel in a really, or, or you know, most of the novel in, in a really, 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 really cool way. 
um, the first half of his novel might be one of my favorite books I've read in ages. Um, it then takes a uh, sort of POV turn that I never quite um, vibed with as, as much as I did the the, with the first part. Um, I think your mileage may vary there. I'd suspect other people would have would have the exact opposite reaction, honestly, where um, the uh, the thing that the novel's doing in the first half or so might be kind of uh, feel repetitious to some people. Um, I found it endlessly exciting um, just because it's so well written and because it's um, it's so playing with voice and and like expectation. Um, and like, here's an important thing. Uh, most of the first half of the novel is it's not written aggressively in second person, but I don't want to tell you what happened. Is is it's second person, and there is like, it has the quality of being a story being told, uh, you know, two way two way third party maybe, but also directly to the reader. Um, that I just found, um, you know, I whenever I do these, I have I have my uh, broken arts trilogy right below the camera, and so my eyes wander down and. I think ah, I should I should reread that because that that's probably the best use of second person I can think of in in a long time. Also, um, so here's sort of the formal spoilers, um, and I won't go past chapter five uh, for this. The first four chapters uh, follow follow this story that that she started to tell. The, the it tells you what happened when. Um, when I was 12, my little brother drowned. He was seven. Um, it sort of ends in a, in a, in a weird way. And then um, chapter five, I'm, I'm gonna skip the first paragraph because, um, no, I'm not. Okay, I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read like a paragraph and a half, maybe two from chapter five. So again, if you wanna, if you wanna know nothing, if this book isn't out for months and months. Please, please, uh, please do what I always thank you for at the end of the video, and don't watch. Um, so chapter five starts. Dear Wayne, you were moving along a groove, the one carved into the world for you. The morning was golden. The roads were as gray and smooth as the skin of seaborne creatures. At the crossroads, you were blindsided. You were blind, and an immense force came at you from one side. As you stepped forward, unaware, it came and knocked you out of your furrow and into another plowed you up and over, put you in another place, elsewhere, where. I don't want to tell you what happened. I want to tell you how it felt. When I was 12, my little brother got hit by a car. He was seven. We were crossing a road together, just the two of us. This was allowed. This was our every weekday. I'll just stop there. Um, the moment I hit that, that she was being true, that she was, she didn't want to tell you what happened. She wanted to tell you how it felt. Um, it, that I was like, I, I was reading it and I was, I like just turned and was like looking around like how, who, how can I, how can I, I need to tell, I need to tell somebody about this. It was like that kind of powerful of a moment for me. Um, I, I'm, I, I am like so excited about this book. Um, I, I have obviously finished it a couple of days ago. I have had a few days to let it sort of sink into my head. Um, I, I, I think if you haven't read Namali Serpel, you should. Um, I think she's just a, a, an excellent author, um, really smart. Um, I mean, the book itself deals with, with obviously with grief um, in the ways that it manifests differently for different people. The the ways that you know, as the as the sort of blurb that I read said, like the way that Cassandra or C deals with it um, is sort of storytelling and 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 like reaffirming herself. The way her mother deals with it is like setting up a foundation and 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 denying. Um, it's also about you know being black and and Cassandra specifically is is mixed um, mixed race, um, and the ways that that sort of um, gets f forced upon you in in different situations and how that history intersects with um, um, life and and complicates things and, and stuff like that. Um, I'm trying to stay broad here because um because i think it's a great book and no one else has had a chance to read it really um and and i think i mean it's just also about like 
so, so not to go into it too much, but there yeah, there is a POV shift about halfway through the book um, that um, I think it's like a I think it's a good one structurally. I think it's a, sort of a smart way to break up the pace and uh, um, explore a different um, set of themes with a with a new character that's still in, intimately tied up with um, the themes and characters from from before the shift. Uh, and it's done very in a very smart um, <laughs> and uh, complicated and messy and um, cool is probably not the right word way. Um, uh, just like in terms of, of plotting. Um, but I I just never quite found that voice um, as as like rich as the as the voice of C. Um, and that kind of dragged me down a little bit through the middle, like the, you know, second half, or mid, second, third, I guess, if you could do it, if you do a, I guess, second, third quarter, maybe third quarter, that's probably roughly it, maybe, whatever, I, I don't need to do fractions in my head while I'm trying to <laughs> express how much I like this book, despite some, um, some caveats about, about the way the writing shifts, and, and, and that's itself sort of a backhanded insult, I guess, um, because, it's not easy to just like de have this very full developed voice that that Sipel has in the the first half of the book with with C, and then just like have a completely different voice just on deck for a different character that it's like it's not like you know you know flopping between whatever like the same character with a different name but like you know the you know the gender swapped or whatever like that where it's the, the writing is the same but the you know the person is different these are this is like two books like this is like <laughs> the, if you don't vibe with the style in the first half there is a very good chance you will absolutely vibe with the writing in the second half um it, it's like it's written by two different people it's it, it's incredible it's it's like a huge feat it's a bummer to me that i didn't quite vibe with it as much as as the beginning um and, and I think it, it all ties up in a, in a, in an interesting way, certainly. <laughs> um, it's, it's a, it's an excellent book. I think it's, it's really good. And, um, and I'm very happy that, uh, I have discovered her writing and been able to enjoy it. Um, and I, and I'm looking forward to continuing, um, you know, hustling this book at the store I work at, uh, cause you know, Old Drift is already a staff pick and I'm pretty sure I could, I could get a couple of these out the door. Um, yeah so that's that um that's that, that's the furrows again i'm always repel the furrows brilliantly written book really really just something special coming out in september um i know it sounds like a fucking promo thing what the fuck um <laughs> that's how it's, it's it's made me a shill uh to nobody because this is a just bees book club only bees are allowed to watch and there's no such thing as a bee i'm a i'm a bee um as always, thanks for not watching.